Greetings everyone, I am Lotus Prince, and for this Let's Play we are going to tackle Resident Evil Outbreak, file number two. This is an interesting title, it's effectively a sequel to Outbreak 1, not that you can really tell from the levels themselves, but there's overarching stuff with character moments, cutscenes, things like that. But this is interesting because Resident Evil Outbreak 1 was a lot of winks to the fans. Remember this cool enemy type? Remember this cool moment? Outbreak File 2 has... I want to say one of those. There's, there's one obvious level where you play it and you think to yourself, okay, I remember this location. But this one has mostly new levels and ideas and very different ways of handling these levels depending on the characters you play with. Uh, you have more degree of control over your NPC characters. You can select which NPC character you want to join you as opposed to the first game. This game is an evolution of its predecessor and it has some pretty clever ideas that even future survival horrors were a little hesitant to implement, including Resident Evil itself. But where are we going to go with this crazy story? Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. Let's go crazy. Always a classic opener. Oh, I forgot about this. Play online with Snap. Well, not anymore, unless you have some private server. It's always weird to see that message. Game may change during online play on a PS2. But yeah, explicit violence and gore we know. Capcom presents... I'm very pleased to see this kind of opening again. It was so good for Outbreak 1. RPD. Don't even tell me. I think it's the same music as last time, which I'm okay with. That's RPD, all right. I'm trying to pick out which locations they are. I don't remember the lasers. This just might be new.
our riggedy bridge. Don't even, don't even tell me we're doing that. File number two. Once again, gorgeous. Oh no. Wow, this sucks. Oh dear. But will he say the thing? President Evil. Outbreak, file number two. No, okay. Well, I don't have anything in the collection. Let's take a look at options. I think this should be pretty straightforward. There are more controls to work with than in traditional Resident Evil games, like Appeal. But for the most part, select with the D-pad or with the stick. I'm going to have to get used to the other buttons, though. Auto-aim is useful. Regular aim though, so I don't have to lock on to a near target. Maybe I need to shoot things. And it does say L1 is reload. I think also you can swap targets while you're already aiming, which is nice. Ad lib, I think that was just your character says something. Cancel, okay, map, that's straightforward. Appeal? Maybe there's two appeals. Right stick in L2. I'll keep vibration on. I'm going to have to get used to select being options, although start as status, that makes enough sense. I think I'm good. Brightness, screen, save, load. I haven't changed anything, so we're good. Let's give this a shot. Well, damn, he said the thing. If you begin a new game, save data for this scenario will be overwritten. Maybe you don't have it as the first option then, unless it switches next time, I don't know. But continue the scenario from the last point at which you have saved. Yet yeah, this is actually a very important change. You may remember that in the original Outbreak, you were allowed to save at typewriters, but if you did that, it was really for if you were gonna shut the game off and you had to come back. If you continue on after saving and die, then the scenario's over. You lose, whether you saved or not. But in Outbreak File 2, you can actually save the game mid-session. You can save, and you can load. And you can die, I think, and load again. I, I think you lose points if you keep doing that. The game does know that you died and reloaded. But if you just want to make it to the end, then you can do that. So, I am already a fan. New game, though. Oh, this scenario. So yeah, you can't start a scenario while you're playing a scenario. That makes sense. Training grounds. Oh, are you kidding me? I could just select anything? So we're not doing the thing where you find out what's next as you beat these things. I can just choose. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is training ground. We actually have a training ground mission. Welcome to Raccoon City, rookie. Learn the basic controls as you see if you have what it takes to survive the zombie-infested streets. I'm gonna do that. Because otherwise we have... It looks like four real scenarios. And the first one is the only one that I've heard about before playing this game, and I am not ready for that one, but we'll get there. Let's see how to play the game. And I think the characters are the same as in File 1. So Kevin, Mark, the guy I played the whole last game with, Jim, George, David, Alyssa, Yoko, Cindy. There we go. I'll go with Mark again, but 
I think there's actually more reason to swap among different characters in this game other than just seeing all of their unique scenes and ending movies. But I'll play with Mark because he's awesome. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I forgot. In file one, when you start a scenario, your partners are determined by which character you pick. But in this one, I can choose a partner, which is also cool because some characters have unique starting items, so I can choose the one with the cool item, and then I can have them give it to me. That's very cool, but in this case I'm not going to make any strategic decisions. This is the tutorial. I don't even know if I'll make strategic decisions in the regular game as far as partners are concerned, but I'll just go with Kevin. Yes. That's right, this is a four-player game. All right, Jim. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So I guess three players? Oh, we're just in immediately. And I forgot about this. We are not playing with tank controls. If I press up, I... Oh, with the D-pad, we are pressing the tank controls. But if I, I press up on the stick, then I go up. Interesting. So D-pad down is back away. Stick down is walk down. Cool. Attention. Now this is the training mission. I think the game freezes while I'm doing this, but in the real missions, I think you're going to have to hastily mash your way through text because the real game is going on. But here I have my time. Training. This training ground scenario is meant to help you grow accustomed to the game's control scheme. In the second game, not the first. Your goal is to make it from this room to the roof. Finish the assignment that waits there to clear the scenario. Caution, the buttons displayed in this tutorial reflect the default control settings. Please be aware the changes you may have made do not appear here. Files. Useful information gained during the game is stored in File. Press the Start button to open the status screen, and the R1 button or L1 button to get to File. Then select a file to read. Once you have obtained a file, you may read it as many times as you wish. Yeah, like, unless there's some clue that's key to completing a scenario, you may as well just mash through these things so you can get back to gameplay before an enemy gets you. You could always read the files anytime you want, after the fact. Caution! The game continues in the background while you are checking files or the status screen. Yeah, see, there you go. Use caution when enemies are nearby or you are in a dangerous area. Fair enough. Um, I guess I press triangle to back out. Hmm. No, I guess I am still playing theoretically. Circle? Okay. Pick up three files and get to the door. So we're really starting basic. What a concept. Resident Evil with a straight up training mode. Also, by the way, start, gun. Do you want to see the craziest thing that you are not ready to comprehend? Move over, Resident Evil 4, because you ain't got nothing on this. Ready? Aim. Oh my god, I can move while aiming! Thanks. Help me! Press on the R stick in different directions. Go! Come on! I can move while aiming. I can just do that. Resident Evil 4 didn't let you do that, and that game was a complete game changer. It was an over the shoulder shooter, baby, but you still had to stick and aim. Look at me now. Anyway. Circle is run. Alright. Oh, hello. Sparkly. Can I get that? There's a file here. Read it now? Sure. Mark. Oh, okay. Unique file for each character. So there's actually a reason to play the training mission with everybody. Full name, Mark Wilkins. Occupation, security guard. This grizzled Vietnam veteran is stronger than most men half his age. His greatest wish is to live in peace with his family. This is like, right from the manual. But here it is digitally, in game. Special features. He's the highest vitality out of the entire group, but his large bulk prevents him from running too fast. Take advantage of his skills. He's suited to protecting the others. Personal item. Yeah, he has his own handgun. I don't know how to find a handgun. 
Mark's trusty handgun is loaded with standard handgun rounds. So I guess if I were playing as some other character, but I want to run fast, I could have Mark be my partner and have him give me the gun, I think. I don't know if they can give me the unique stuff as opposed to just regular inventory they start with. Extra item, handgun magazine. Yeah, maybe I could have him hand me some bullets or something. The handgun for Mark and other handguns experience a sharp increase in reloading speed when this item is taken advantage of. Special action guard. Circle while holding R1. He takes less damage for most enemy attacks. The virus contamination rate is not affected. Oh, speaking of the virus contamination rate, in this game, if you're playing online and the virus contamination gets you, you can actually play as a zombie and attack the other players for a few minutes. You eventually die, but that's crazy. Special action two, full swing. Hold arm, press X. So try this with swinging weapons. Yeah, I guess he hits really hard with melee weapons. Other, he can move objects that would normally require two or more people to push at once, but he cannot fit into narrow spaces like lockers. Yeah, that's insanely useful. Remember in Outbreak 1, where I had to move the car, and I just moved it? I just did it? I didn't have to call my AI partner? That's when Mark really comes in handy, as far as basic level navigation is concerned. Other characters might be able to pick locks or navigate crawl spaces. This guy can push heavy objects without help. That is very useful. Also, just for the record, select. There's my options menu. I can use it whenever I want. Start. L1 or R1. There you go. Check this out. This is so much more chill compared to file one, where zombies came in here in like less than two minutes and it was the most stressful thing. Um, anyway. Can I go behind the thing? Yeah, look at that. And we're at Jack's bar. I think this might be the place from the first game. File. Read it. Playing manual knowledge version? What? The status screen. Enemies and partners will continue to move even while this screen is open. If attacked, you'll be returned to the normal screen. Well, I do appreciate that. Even in the Souls games, if I get attacked while my menu's out, the menu's out. <laughs> Damage. Uh, examine your health with the EKG. Green is fine. Caution yellow is minor wounds. Caution orange. It still says minor, but eh, watch out. You're getting to danger, and danger is grave wounds. Poison. You might be poisoned. You'll gradually lose health. Your EKG will be poison. Uh, you cannot die from poison, but your health can be reduced to, like, one... The poison will not go away until you make it go away. Bleeding. Attacks can leave you bleeding, your speed decreases, and your movement depletes. Um, it'll read bleed. Yeah, it's very Dino Crisis. Virus. If it reaches 100, you're dead. Crawling. Take enough damage and you'll crawl. You can't attack or move from room to room in this state. While crawling, your viral contamination increases. So man, you are really punished if you get damaged enough. To get back up, use a recovery item or be helped to your feet by another player. So that's useful, I could call them. I had that help me. I can't do it now. Maps. Press square to get a map with the rooms you've been to. If you find a map, you'll see all the rooms. Maps 2. Oh, this is great. This is great. This is like the modern RE. Green rooms, been there. Red, you're there now. Yellow, haven't looked blue open for doors and red cannot be opened although i will say i like the um, resident evil remake version of the map where i think a green room was completely clear of items while gray was you've been there before herbs green health blue poison red restoration increase we know herbs too you can mix them green and red mixed there are many combinations each with unique properties confirming partner status you can look at the gauge and items of your partner in the same room via the status screen. Taking items from the dead. If they've died, grab them. Use the status screen. Why not? They don't need them. Saving. You can save. You're able to continue from that point, but if you save again, your old save that'll be overwritten. So you can't have multiple save files. Yet, overwriting save sounds very obvious, but you only have the one save file. So either you overwrite it or you're not making another save. The number of times each typewriter can be used is limited. This is so different. It's like classic Resident Evil. 
Additionally, you'll find that if you clear a scenario after having continued from a save, you'll incur a clear point penalty. That's fine though, I'm just here to beat the scenarios. I don't care. Dying is no longer as punishing as it used to be. Now, I never actually died in Outbreak 1, but I was super stressed for the entire playthrough because if I die, the whole scenario's gone, I have to do it all again. So I can be a little less stressed this time. Point penalty, I don't care. Alright, we're cool. And just for the record, status screen, uh, there's my EKG, it says fine. I don't even know if I have a virus contamination meter, unless it's that blue circle to the right of fine, which presumably means I'm completely safe, because this is the training scenario. But anyway, that was this. Let's move on from Jack's bar. Also, map. It's so cool to be able to just call up the map. Also, I think there was more of a pause in the first game than this one. Like, I just bring out the map. Maybe there was some sort of programming optimization or something? I don't know. Staff room, it's locked. There you go, red door. However, is that something at the bottom of the screen? Oh, wait a minute. I saw a sparkly, actually. Another file. The status screen. Enemies and partners will continue to move even while the screen is open. If attacked, to be returned to the normal one. The buttons listed apply to the default. Movement. Use the D-pad or the left stick. D-pad are based on the position of the character. And yeah, analog are based on the overall presentation. I already discovered that. Aiming and attack. R1 prepares. D-pad or left analog aims. L1 cycles through targets. And X actually attacks. Okay, I covered that too. Reloading. Go to your inventory screen and combine, or simply press L1. That's pretty nice. I think in Resident Evil 1's remake, you would hold the attack button and press circle, I think. But even then, that was in the remaster. In the original version, I think you still had to use your status screen. Reloading 2. Each bullet consumes time. However, there are items that allow for a full reload in a fraction of the time. Special actions. Climb stairs, ladders, similar objects. Press X. Giving items. Use the give command after selecting an item to offer to another player. Asking for items. Highlight their item and say ask. Shouldering. Press X to grab a person who needs help and carry them around. And circle to back off. Adlib. Press triangle and you press, uh, you'll say something relevant to the current situation, which can give you clues. That feels new to this game. Appeal. Oh, if you need help, that could be very useful. Yeah, I've already done that. Move out. Help me. Yeah, our left, help me. And triangle? All set. Time to go to the door. Yep, there you go. I've I've gotten my items. I got an extra file. So what is the door? This doesn't count. Alright. And this is just nothing. So map. I only see the one door. The one I already checked. Oh, task cleared. Okay. Attention. Opening doors. There are locked doors. Find and use the appropriate key. When you examine a door, you'll be given a hint about the key. Probably just tells you what key you might need or something, or it's locked with a key, or it's locked with a combination. Search thoroughly for any keys you may need. Once you have one, Ugh, you have to highlight your exact key to use it, instead of just pressing X. Ugh. Choose use and confirm it. Alright, if you have the correct key, you'll unlock the door. Freaking Resident Evil guide in over here. Pick up the staff room key and get to the door. Oh, there it is. It just spawned in front of me. Will you take it? Yes. You obtain the staff room key. Combine and present. There's no give option because there's nobody else here but the staff of Jay's Bar. So there we go, they're the ones who use it. So I can't just open the door? Ah, oh, brutal. All right, fine. At least there's like no loading for opening menus anymore. Use, I'll use the key. And I'm assuming I discard it. Task cleared. All tasks for this room cleared. Move on to next room. So uh, yeah, the key's gone. This pleases me. All right, let's go. Let's see how long it takes to load screens, because it was pretty rough in the first game. Still got that heartbeat. 
That was actually quite fast. Not gonna lie, long loading times usually suck, but it really gave me time to look up what to do next while waiting. So here are the stairs. Do we still have that window where things can kill me? Yeah, this is where I died in file one. I walked up to that window and hands just yanked me through the window. It was terrifying. Attention! File 2 is loaded with special moves and controls not found in the first game. Oh yeah? Action aiming. Yeah. Hold aim and L1 to walk. The, like, for people who didn't read the manual, this must have blown their damn minds when they first played this game. And you'll aim automatically in the nearest enemy because you're holding L1? That's crazy. Like, that is insanely useful. Ground grab. I could pick up items while crawling as long as it's on the same level as me. Cool. Sorry. Triangle while holding L2 to issue an apology. <laughs> it was a slip up. It was an honest mistake. That, that's legitimately useful for online. I, I really got a kick out of this. There was one time I was playing Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker online via the PS3, and somebody did something. I think they like fired a shot that hit my friend or something like that. It didn't kill them, but all of a sudden I heard that character go, I'm sorry, I just... And that just really cracked me up. Adlib. Oh, on the map? To announce the name of the room in the center of the map? Wow. I'm going to try that next. And file comments. Choose file and you'll comment on the current page you're viewing. Really? That's insane. File. So I'll open file. Hmm. Nothing really to read about this, I suppose. Doesn't really help me. Um, map? Stairs between... Th that is really cool. Although, strangely, it says it at the top of the screen anyway, so, like, maybe if there are more... Like, it says the room in the center of the screen. I guess this is the only room that is available, so it's redundant. But if I have the whole map available and I want to check where the, what room is, where my crosshair is right now, if there were a room there then it would tell me the name of that room. So that's actually really cool when I want to figure out which room to go to. I want to go to the lobby, but which room is the lobby? There's five rooms on the first floor, and I could just press triangle over wherever my crosshair is. That's very cool. These are some real improvements. Staff room. I gotta say, like, even though this plays like classic Resident Evil where the controls are kinda clunky, these are some legit improvements. So, like, I, I am impressed. Attention. AI partners in single play mode. Okay, now this is where I'm particularly interested. The other characters will be controlled by AI. Your experience playing will no doubt differ depending on how the AI characters act. They are capable of all the moves that you are. They can move, attack, use items, talk, help, trade, etc. They can also take damage and die. It's up to you how you'll interact with them. Will you help them when they're in trouble or use them as a shield to cover your own escape? It's entirely up to you, but your actions may have consequences. Their movement and orders. They may choose to move with you or they may wander off on their own. Their actions may even change based on your own status or progress of the scenario. Appeal to them using the right stick. Of course, they may have their own personalities, and they may not always be willing to follow orders. One piece of advice is to wait a few moments before addressing them again if they ignore repeated requests. They could also simply be out of earshot. Make sure they're close enough to hear you clearly. Normally, nearby partners will act on orders given. Use the appeal shift function, hold L2 while using the right stick, to call out their names and address orders to them specifically. Nice. Items. They're capable of holding items just like you are. You can freely exchange and combine items with them as you see fit. They use their own judgments to use, equip, and reload their own items. Their methods will differ. Some may use recovery items immediately, others may wait. Well, I hope they give me things that I want immediately, because that's very important. You can trade items freely with them, request items you're interested in, and choose request. You may also present items to them. Usually when offering an item, the nearest AI partner will snatch it, but if you use the Appeal Shift feature to call it a specific name first, you can choose who will be the first recipient. That's great! They're free to obtain and use items even separated from you. When you again cross paths, check the status screen to see what they have found. They may just have an important item for you sometimes. Yeah, that was a, a very key moment in my playthrough of the first game. 
Deciding which items to carry is key to survival. It's up to you to decide which items to hold onto yourself and which to entrust to your partners. Manage your items carefully if you want to stay alive. This is legitimately important information. This isn't like obnoxious tutorial where it's like, alright, 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 like this is actually important. I cannot check whatever that is. And is that a body or is that a statue? I can't tell what's over there. Otherwise, I'll just keep on jogging. Oh, although, let me see. Staff room. It's all the staff room. Rats. I can go in here. What's up with the, this particular door? Nothing. Doesn't count. Attention! Shouldering up the injured. Go to a crawling person, press X to offer them support. Uh, the virus builds faster while on the ground, so help them. You can also walk while supporting them, press circle to release them, and return to your normal state. Cool. Oh, magically I'm um, locked in. Getting darker. Support an injured PC with your shoulder. Shoulder up the injured. That was my ad lib. Sorry. I held L2 and pressed triangle for that one. Yeah, I remember this room. This is just from the first game. Here's the guy. X. Mark. Lend my shoulder? Where are they? Got him. I didn't even press anything, I just let him go on my own because I guess my job was done. Attention. Getting items from them, I can order them to use or hand over items. Ask to use, highlight their item and select it. Ask to use. Of course, there are some instances where I can not be followed with the nature of the item. Request. Highlight the partner's item and select it with X and choose request. Remember, they can and will occasionally refuse requests based on how they get along with you. Oh, brutal. Present, offer it to them. There's also a shortcut feature that allows you to offer items by pressing triangle while highlighting the item. Cool. I can call the name of a specific character just before offering items to get their attention and give it to them in particular. Great. Order a PC to use their first aid spray. He has it. He's got a 45 auto magazine, iron pipe, and first aid spray. I will select the first aid spray. Request, ask to use. This is so simple. So, ask to use. Yeah. Awesome. Request an iron pipe. Oh, good. And I'm I'm the big melee swinger anyway. He'll be unarmed if I do this, but oh well. Request. Hey you. Hey. You. He's probably totally cool with it because I just helped him. Did I wait too long to pick it up? Hey you! Hey! Got it? Didn't I? There, 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 okay. Give it to him, or just give it back. I need to give the iron pipe, huh? Let me just see something. Looks like I did a big swing. If I equip it. So there's my swing. However, it's the guard. Yeah, he really leans into it. All right, I'm going to go back to equipping my gun. And now I can give the iron pipe back. We're just experimenting with giving and uh, requesting. Present. I was looking for give. Present. And he took it. Task cleared. And that's it. Okay, there's a new door. Attention. Opening doors too. Uh, I can open locked doors without a key. If it says the lock looks fragile, break down the door with a tax. Oh, this is where I would like my melee. Although I suppose I could use my fists and unequip my gun. If you are having a hard time finding a certain key and there are no enemies nearby who need your attention, just break down the door. Stronger weapons do the job faster. Well, damn. Attack a door. I'm going to unequip my gun first. The 
The lock looks fragile. All right. Yeah, I do my shoulder ram. Attack the door? Okay. And Mark is the strong guy. I wonder if he did it in fewer hits than other people would have. All tasks for this area cleared. Move on to next room. This is great. I really appreciate this tutorial. Like, I genuinely do. Let's go. Just immediately. It's some door. Liquor room. Not to be confused with liquor room from Resident Evil 2. And we're in. Oh, this place. Huge room, but we're certainly in the liquor room. Oh, attention! Taking items from corpses. You can salvage items from dead or zombified bodies of fallen allies. Open the status screen. The items on the body will be displayed. Oh, because it's still my partner, even if they're dead. Highlight the stuff I want. Take them. Choose trade from the item menu of the status screen, and then select the item you want to trade or an empty spot in your own inventory. Recover an item from a dead PC. Okay. Is this going to be Jim then, because Kevin's clearly alive? Or are we going to magic Kevin over here because they magically barricaded the door in that other room? Who knows? Jim, no! He's got a lucky coin. He's got a regular handgun, which... Mark happens to come with his own, but it's fine. Exchange. Got it. And I'll take his lucky coin. Oops. I'll take his lucky coin, too. Yeah, I can just take it. And I think that's a, a character unique item. So look at that. That's great. Task cleared. Attention. Loading. Combine the item. And it'll automatically equip the weapon. Take ammo from beside the body and reload your gun. I already had handgun rounds, but again, it's because of my particular character. It didn't have to be this way. So start. Combine. And it automatically equips me. Great. Okay. I'm assuming that does the magazine go away? I hope it does. All tasks for this area cleared. Move on to next room. The sound is pretty scary. So I really just have the magazine. That's a little awkward, but it's fine. Also, I forgot that sound was probably... We had to use that forklift to open the, the big door or whatever. So I guess I'm going to climb the ladder. This is how I had to escape. I am not going to climb the ladder. Oh, here. Okay. Just walk right in. Stairs between third floor and the rooftop. We're almost there. Attention. Crawling. Oh no, I just dropped. When injured and crawling along the ground, movement and attack are severely limited. The virus gauge increases in speed as well. If you notice a nearby item, press X to pick it up. Use of a healing item will allow you to pull yourself up to your feet. But they're slightly less effective in this state. You really are punished for being punished. Pick up an item. Okay. Also, uh, I guess I'm gonna drop... Can I, like, not drop the handgun magazine? Seriously? Well, hmm. We'll see how this works. Because here's a first aid spray, but am I allowed to do this? Oh, I could switch the items. Thank God. How useful. Use a healing item and stand. And I just automatically stand. The fact that I could switch the items greatly pleases me. All tasks cleared. Get out of here. I'm still injured, though. I'm in danger. That's ridiculous. So you have to use a first aid spray just to get out of being in the crawl state, but you'll still need to use another one to actually heal for real? That's ridiculous. But all right, let's keep going. And 
and this is the only way out. No items over here. Goodbye. And there's the rooftop. I'm out. Oop, what's this? Uh, attention. Weapons and attacks. R1 or R2, really? And press X with the equipped weapon. Aim. With no weapon, you tackle by pushing the D button or left stick down or away. You perform a kick. Oops. R1 will aim automatically the nearest guy. R2 will aim in your face. That's right, I did read that. L1 the toggle. So, equip a weapon. Sure, but, um... I got, I got my gun, but... Forward. Back. That little low kick. It's very hard to see all this stuff, though. At least they flash a little bit. Iron pipe, yeah, I'm taking that. But I'll, I'll just go for my own handgun here. Continue past this point and you'll need to fight enemies. If you don't have a weapon equipped, equip one now. I mean, I do have two guns and a pipe. I think I'm good. Destroy the enemy. I took more balls than I'm comfortable with. Training complete. Enjoy the game! Aw, <laughs> oh, thanks Capcom! To be continued for the trading mission. Wait until you get the real stuff. I'm excited! This new control scheme has me in the mood. Is there anything about... Like, like do I get my data for that? Did that save? Is that a thing? I know I could save from the options menu, but like collections? What was data convert? Oh, transfer collection from file two to outbreak one. That's so weird. I forgot about this. You could transfer one to two, but you could also transfer two to one, which is incredible. But I can transfer my collection data from the first game. I think there's also some weird quirk with this game where if you transfer stuff backwards, like, I think it, like, unlocks your ability to buy anything at all in the first game. Because everything costs points, but I don't have to beat hard mode to unlock the ability to buy a certain thing. But I'll transfer stuff to this game. Did it. That was shockingly fast. I'll create the main data. Although I wonder if this means I lost my training info, but whatever. It's fine. It's so cool that I can convert forwards and backwards. I don't know if I've ever heard of a game that just... It's not some sort of weird thing you can figure out on the internet. It just explicitly allows you to convert files backwards. If you played file 2 first, then oh boy, I have good news for you. So let's take a look at my collection, which I now have. insane. That's so cool. Alright, works for me. What if I do continue? Yeah, it's scenario-specific data. Okay, I've already cleared the, uh, the training mission, so that's just where we leave off. Well, there you go. I successfully completed the training. Hooray for me! But for now, it is time to stop the installment. Well, we certainly made a lot of progress today, didn't we? We completed the training mission, which it was only a few rooms, but it was actually useful. And it had all sorts of cool new features that you might not expect if you'd only played the first Outbreak game and you didn't look up the instructions or anything. There are new things to pay attention to, and radically game-changing mechanics, like the ability to choose your partner, and things like that. 
so I look forward to seeing how crazy these scenarios get. Until next time, everyone.